OK, Thank so we're going to going to take a take a flight now away from away from Glasgow and um, and down towards the, 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 the Scottish borders. And I'm going to start off with, um, with with Kevin, I think. And um, I think Pamela's maybe going to speak as well, but down to to, to Gala Shields and the borders. So I'm Kevin Riles, head teacher at Gala Shields Academy. I'm joined by Pauline Anderson, one of the deputy heads. And we're going to do a quick uh, double act on our plans for what we're calling our plan E. So I will share our, uh, our slide for this. I hope that's going to work. OK, everybody seen that all right? So I think from, from, from a starting point for us, it was very much seeing our role in the in the community um, as, as as education. We've said this throughout lockdown, throughout the last 12 months, throughout the pandemic, that we will be, you know, the, the glue that binds the community together in Gala Shields and the surrounding community. And, and, and that's that's what we're kind of looking forward to, to next week and that huge challenge, but huge responsibility to bring a school back. Um, and it's it's something that, that it's a huge thing that, that we're hearing about this afternoon, obviously. For, in terms of the context of our school, um, 829 is our role. We've often kind of been described as Scotland in miniature. Gala Shields is a town of about 12,000. We've got 11 primary school uh, um, cluster primaries ranging from sort of uh, under 30 to, to, to a few hundred and uh, our our free school meals and, and PEF is sitting around 16-17% and as a context for this we've got 10% um, or so on buses so that's enough to make the transport a real uh, factor in, in what we're doing. So really it's um, you know we, we've got we had some real sort of principles we wanted to work to. We wanted to focus on planned and progressive and relevant learning rather than a real focus on the numbers in all the time. And that was that was very important to us that, that we had that focus. So we've got constraints like everybody's talked about, the size of rooms. We've got a really old building here and the vast majority of our rooms could only take well could, could only take well under a half in as well. And another big principle of uh, of important principle just before uh, Pauline's going to talk about um, staff wellbeing and PT and staff ownership was that we we've got iPads in Scottish borders as well, and we didn't want to lose that that blended learning um, and that home learning technique, you know, that kind of expertise that all the young people and families and staff have built up. And we've heard that from. Um, you know, Castle Milk as well there, that's, um, I felt that there might have been a, an inclination to jump in and think, right, that's the end of remote learning, that's the end of using, you know, technology to learn, but it's definitely the future in many ways, and we will keep using um, a, a, the iPads and we'll keep doing remote learning as, as we move forward. So we, we built in time for that in, in our timetable. So I'll hand over to Pauline, if that's all right, Pauline, for, uh, for, for going on to the next two points about staff well-being and PT and staff ownership. OK, thanks, Kevin. Um, so I'm just going to do, tell you a little bit about some of the uh, priorities around staff well-being and uh, staff ownership. Um, when we talk about Plan B to Plan E, I think staff well-being has always been one of our top priorities. It's always been about taking staff with us, because this is going to be so challenging anyway. If we don't have the backing of our staff, we're not going to manage to get the best learning experiences for our young people. Um, so I, we started off by asking what it was that staff really wanted out of all of this. And what they kept coming back to was the senior phase. We need senior phase pupils in front of their own teacher for as much time as can be possible. So that's always been my kind of starting point, using the principle that there's no point in a teacher of practical woodwork having 20 pupils with 10 of them in one room and 10 of them in another room, because they need the most time with a teacher as they possibly can. They also said they liked having long slots for senior phase. So when we've been working on Plan D, we've had pupils in all morning, and we, we wanted to work build on the strengths of what was working well. We've been working really closely all year with uh, the union rep, and that's been a huge shift for us. If I reflect on this, this time last year, I had very little to do with the union rep, but now I'm in touch with them on a daily basis and even over the weekend. So that's been really good. And it's really built up staff confidence as well. Um, so I, I'm just going to give you a wee quote from Daniel Bowman. Um, he said, pupils first and staff are very close second. 
Well, I think I've learned now that I might debate that because if we don't have, if we don't put our staff first and we don't think of them, then we won't have happy staff. And if we don't have happy staff, we won't have as good an experience for our young people, which is what we want. Um, there's been a real feeling of rallying around on the staff. Um, I was just reflecting that I sent an email to staff this morning and saying I really appreciated that. Nobody's questioning things like, when am I going to be doing my prep for my online lessons? They're not questioning their non-contact time at all. In fact, they're doing the opposite. They're wanting to have more contact time with the pupils, which is amazing. We've got PTs that are really owning this. They feed back to me through the... the, the Staff feedback to me through their PT so that I'm not getting inundated with lots of emails. And they're sorting things in their own departments. Things like uh, this week, we've currently got senior phase pupils getting two hour slots. Um, and they're really enjoying that because they're getting through an awful lot of practical work. And what we've been doing is we've just been saying, take a break whenever you want it. So I'm going to keep that model going and just let staff be responsible for when senior phase pupils are breaking. So if you're in an N4 maths class, it's quite likely you'll have regular short breaks. But if you're in a higher art class, it'll probably be that you'll only just have um, your 20-minute break at one time or maybe not even bother to have that at all, which I suspect is what will happen in an art department. Um, so we're, we're still keeping the senior phase discreet from BGE, as, we, as we've been doing for a long, long time now. Our lunches have always been at separate times. And when I'm saying the seniors can break, uh, whenever the teacher wants, it is going to be at a different time for the BGE pupils. I'm not going to say much more, but I am going to mention what's happening on a Friday because Kevin will explain what the structure of the timetable is like. On a Friday, we don't have senior phase pupils in, and I wanted to maximise the amount of time that senior phase were with us. So I've prioritised the practical subjects, and we've managed to get quite a few extra ones in. For example, we've got practical cookery that are coming in, uh, one half on one Friday and one half on the following Friday, and they're actually going to complete the practical part of their, um, their uh, assessments, which is great. And I've also got people coming in now for things like personal finance so that they can get this ticked off and we can concentrate on everything else after Easter. And these are building up. I'm getting emails coming in even now saying, can I have the following pupils in to do Spanish speaking? So I'm just building that up all the time. And this is people just asking to do this and not taking any other time off them, which is which is magic. Um, yeah, yeah, English folios as well. That's another thing that, that staff are asking to come in for as well. I think the point that I'm really trying to make is that by taking staff with us and owning this plan, we're really getting way more out of this um, for our young people, and we're getting more out of our staff, and we're getting more out of it for our young people, which is ultimately what we really want. So I'll hand back to you now, Kevin. Yeah, thanks very much. Just a, a couple of more points, folks. I, I'm, I'm uh, just, to, just to conscious of, of time here. Uh, Pauline's mentioned the, really the main bits that I think might be your takeaways from, from Gala Academy um, in, for this session, if I'm honest. But one final thing to talk about um, is learning, teaching, assessment and nurture. So um, like we've heard earlier on, we were really, really keen to not lose what we've developed um, in terms of uh, home learning and you know we, we've you know emphasizing techniques like flip learning the the, the the need to you know really focus on content and checking that content and with that you know learners need to need to experience something three times all those ideas before they've really grasped them and that's so so we're, we're in, in a way we're actually getting to do blended learning now so our s1 S1 and 2 will have a blended learning experience and so less 3 to 6. Nurture is a big priority in Scottish borders and you know we want our in S1 to 2 they have um, they will have a day a week um, where they will have three across the nine curricular areas they will have they'll have three curricular areas a week um, uh, in that time and that's really to be a real kind of nurturing experience and we want that to be a, a kind of special welcome back to school experience for the young people there. So we're beginning to keep our priorities of nurturing, learning and teaching and, and what we're doing as well. And just a very, very final point. Um, we've we've learned a lot as a school over the last year and I think we've, we, we're going to be able to to move, uh, you know, to move forward and, and maybe working in different ways that we've learned and, and, and you know, for the positive. And that's us. Thanks.
Great. Uh, thank, thanks so much, Kevin. Thanks. Th thanks, Pauline. That's another another great another great presentation. Again, just an example of of, of, of different schools doing things in, in in different ways. Just a couple of a couple of reflections from from that is um, I I I really. I really loved what you're saying about remote learning. As if this this wasn't this wasn't a time to be removing remote learning. In in, in fact, you unashamedly have said that this is actually going to be a key feature of the timetable. Yeah. Uh, and and I'm guessing from that as well, this is a key feature of the timetable. Um, you know, in the in, in in the immediate future. But but I seem to be getting the sense as well is that that you see the importance of digital technology of, of which remote learning is part of that is an, is an important part of your school philosophy sort of going forward as well. So I think it's great that you're really looking towards the future. I, I, I noticed a, a couple of comments coming up in the chat. Um, and again, a few things that I was scribbling scribbling down there is um, I, I really I really love how you tell the story about how you've taken all of your staff with you on this journey and, and that how staff are coming coming to, to you to kind of say, hey, we know that we know the learners best. This is what we need from our senior leadership team. Can you timetable this? We're willing to go a, a, above and beyond. And um, you mentioned other key groups in that as well, for example, the, the union rep and building up relationships with other key stakeholders, including including parents. So I just think really, really, uh, really, really good, really, really good stuff there. And um, and and. And just that ability to sort of to, to strengthen from the, from the middle is, is is so is so commendable. I'm I'm really conscious of time, but but I know that Education Scotland staff and and others are going to stay on the line for, for for a few more minutes at least. But I just wondered if um anybody's got any questions for for any of our um, for any of our pre presenters there um that, that they'd like to put in, and, and perhaps some of the people that are on the back channel can can collate any of these questions and we and we can put them on. And and while we're doing that, and while we're thinking about questions, maybe just sort of give one one final remark which is something that kevin said which is um that that, that he's learned or, or you you and you and gala have, have learned a lot in a, as a school uh, and, and i think it would be absolutely fair to say that everybody that's participated in this webinar this afternoon um have learned a lot from you as a school in fact we've learned a lot from all of our schools this afternoon that have, that have been doing this about how we've taken again these very very difficult things and, and and built our own sort of local models around them